Hello folks, welcome to Light Source Engraving. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're a regular, thank you very much for stopping by again. I appreciate it. Today I have a quick video and this is the follow up on the LA Hobby Guys video regarding the new features in the Lightburn 1.5 beta. It is out for public beta testing, so you will be able to grab it at the link you'll find in the description. So you can download it and try out some of these features. I just want to give you the five quick hits for Galvo lasers. Rich went over a lot of features that can apply to any laser, and I'm going to focus on these five specific features that will be handy for the Galvo laser users, whether it's a UV, fiber, or CO2 Galvo. And I'm going to demonstrate a couple of them, uh, three of them actually, and hopefully you'll get a sense of how to use them. And then you can download the beta and try it out for yourself. And without further ado, let's get into the Lightburn public beta release page. If you go to lightburnsoftware.com slash pages slash public beta releases, and there are dashes between those, see right here you'll find the link right here where you can download that. So head to the Lightburn software beta release page and you can download it right there and here it lists the full change list for the 1.5 beta. And we do have the 1.5 beta here. And the number one feature that I'm psyched about to see involves 3D slicing with Lightburn. Now the 3D slicing program within Lightburn is great. It does a great job, but there's one thing I've always wished I've been able to do within the 3D slice. And guess what? It's available. Yes, cleanup passes. We can now run cleanup passes during a 3D slice. So if you're one of those folks that likes to run 500, or more passes on your 3D engraves to get those beautiful deep engravings, you can now add a cleanup pass. And let me show you how to do it. So if we head into our image settings, you'll see that we are set to 3D slice. And if we look right here, there's a little tick box that we can enable the cleanup pass. So see cleanup pass here. And then we're going to notice a change. No cleanup pass enabled. We just have our one setting. Enable cleanup pass, we end up with a second sublayer titled cleanup. And in this sublayer, we can change whatever settings we want our speed, power, frequency, Q pulse width, line interval and clean up after. This is the important setting to pay attention to here. Clean up after number of passes. So if we're running 256 passes and we want to clean up after every 20 passes, we just keep the number 20 right there. If you want it to run a clean up pass after every 10 passes, you can have it do that. It'll run this one pass every 10 passes so you, you would end up with a total of uh, 25 cleaning passes basically if you're running 300 you'd have 30 cleanup passes but you can change this to whatever number you want if you want to run it every 50 passes you can run it every 50 passes it's totally up to you and whatever your heart desires but it's just amazing it's there i'm so happy so that's the number one cool feature. The number two cool feature we have involves the rotary. So I have rotary enabled. I'm gonna click start. Well, let me set it to output. I won't give you a moment. We'll get it figured out. I'm gonna click start. And we have a new option here that says output center. And then this show button is the new feature. So if we click that show button, it is going to run, Lightburn will run a framing line 
along the axis of your rotary. So if it's Y axis, it's going to run along the X. So you can square up your material. And let me show you what that looks like. All right, you'll see I have a pipe in the check rotary at the moment. The red dot is on and is positioned right in the center. Now when I click the show on the output, beside the output center, click the show button and it runs a line so you can line up your object in your rotary. So my rotary is definitely not square. And I can hit show center. And we can use that to get our object squared up. That is a very cool feature. Another feature in the rotary, so this will be number three, is the ability to frame. And it will frame the segments, is what it's called. So there, you can do, this is the first slice, then it frames the second slice, then it would do the third, fourth, fifth, and then return to the first. It's not quite working perfectly yet. Uh, they, that might be something they're still working on to iron out any last bugs. But you'll see that it's the, when you hit frame, you'll get the previous slice and next slice. So you can frame your slices. It should rotate the rotary to where it, that exact slice is going to be placed and then frame it up for you. So look forward to that improving in the future, but that is feature number three. All right, now I have another cool one here. Feature number four is going to be in your laser tools and it's under taper warp. Taper warp is looking very amazing. Just for the simple fact that we can combine it with cylinder correction to do a tapered cylinder and get a nice looking graphic just by letting Lightburn do the, do the math. And then all we have to do is burn the graphic. So I have a demo set up for you. And what I have is a piece of paper under my CO2 Galvo, piece of poster board. And I know that the top diameter is 75. I know the length is 175 and the bottom diameter is 45. When you're calculating the length, that's the length from the top of the object to the bottom, not the length of your graphic. It needs the measurement from this, where you measure the top diameter, the length from there to the point where you measure the bottom diameter. So that's the length from where you measure the bottom diameter to where you measure the top, that is the length. And then it uses that to calculate how much correction is needed based on your measurements. So get good measurements. And just remember, you measure the top diameter and then you note where you measured that diameter, measure the bottom diameter, and you note where you measured it. And then you measure the length between those two and then you plug that in at length. So once it adds this correction, you see that the bottom is expanded and wider than the top of the image. So that's how that correction is applied. And then we can also add cylinder correction on top of that. So if you go to laser tools and cylinder correction setup, you can then turn on your cylinder correction and set it up for whatever your object is. And then you can run taper and cylinder correction at the same time. And that's the demo that I'm going to do for you right now. And I'm using it on the CO2 Galvo with the measurements that I've just input into Lightburn, the 75, 175 and 45 on the taper tool. 
Now I'm gonna run that and let you see how it turns out. There you can see the results of the paper tool, how it does look flat. Now keep in mind this is just a demo with some poster boards that are rolled together, so it's not an exact circle. But for the paper, that looks pretty darn good. And you can see that it is a paper cylinder. But that's how that works. Now, the last new thing that's in the beta version that I have, and it's super exciting, you can now do a nine point lens correction within Lightburn in the beta version I have. I'm, I'm a beta tester, so I don't know if this is in the public beta that's out there yet, but it's coming. So I want you to see this. It's uh, gonna make doing your lens correction so much easier. You won't have to drive or swap. You won't have to use Easy CAD. You just stay with Lightburn and you're happy. That's all there is to it. You use Lightburn and you're happy and you enjoy your day and you're not messing around with Easy CAD. What could be better? So let's say we have a new lens and we haven't used it and it's given us fits. I'm like, what is wrong? Well, we can go to the laser tools menu, go to calibrate Galvo lens, nine point correction, easy. And can it get any easier? You don't have to use EasyCAD. Before you start, make sure you have chosen the correct laser source in the device settings window. Any material that you can mark with high contrast, large enough to cover the working area of your laser. Fiber lasers, black construction paper works well. CO2 lasers, you can use white. I like to use black poster board with all my lasers, whether it's CO2 fiber or UV. You enter this working area of the lens. You enter the size of the box that you want to output. And it's telling you that 85 to 90% of the field is ideal. You click next. You set the parameters. You can frame it and then it'll mark it. So here we're going to frame the nine point correction. And there it is framing and it's framing without any correction. And from there we can proceed to mark. And then once we've marked, we hit next. And then you select the light burn image that matches the result from the laser. Our image has the light burn pointed off to the left, or to the right, and then this way. The top is to the right, the bottom is to the left. So we have this image here, and then we click next. And then it's telling you what to measure and where to input those. So if we did that, and then it's gonna tell us these measurements to put in. And you click next. And then it'll say maximize working area. That's if you want to allow it to go to the very edges of your lens. But this will have your down point corrections done and that's all you have to do. And this will apply it to the device settings. I do not want to save that because I didn't put in the numbers, but nine point correction is now a piece of cake within Lightburn. 
So those are the major changes for the Galbo users out there. There's some other neat tips and tricks. Like I said, Rich covered it in his video that was released earlier today or whenever, depending on when you watch this video. But be sure and check that out for some additional tips and tricks. But that's all I have for you. I want to keep this fairly short and just show you those features that I'm pretty excited about coming to Lightburn 1.5. And that's it for today. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you, patrons, for your support. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, if it's your first time here or you've been here before, I greatly appreciate you watching. And I'm just going to wrap it up and say, most importantly, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next one.